I'm sorry, say you got past you. Excuse me. I'm just sure there's a few remarks that you'd like to make to her. Jackie, I told you I'm not out for revenge. Besides, I have nothing against Siri. Yes, but after everything that she's done to you, I'm sure there's just a... a Siri few. was duped. She may have been duped, but she did fall in love with an imposter and a traitor. She's a big girl. And you don't hold any grudge? None. Grant, it's so hard to believe that. I assure you, I have no intention of trying to hurt Celia. I will tell you one thing, though. I hope more than one, but go on and go ahead. <laughs> I am a little curious. About what? About her life. About what led up to her marrying this man. Why? I'm, uh, I'm trying to piece my life back together. Celia was a very big part of my life. Well, what kind of things do you want to know? Little things, mostly. For instance, were you, uh, were you at her wedding? No, I wasn't, but I heard it was quite a fiasco. Really? Why was that? Well, it's a little complicated to go into, but I've got plenty of uh, press clippings if you want to come by and see them. I would love to see them. Well, just come by the office, and I'd be glad to show you the file as long as I can print your reaction. You know you can't. Well, Grant, why don't we go ahead and get started on the interview, if it's okay? Fine. Though I really think we covered everything the other day. Well, you know what I want to go into today is um, a little bit more background on the earlier years. All right. Did I tell you that Ian's decided to print this on the Sunday uh, cover piece? It's... Oh. Ian? My editor, you spoke to him earlier. Oh, Mr. Shelton, I, uh... I didn't realize that that was his, his first name. Is there something wrong? You know, Jackie, I, I certainly don't feel it very well. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, um, we can go back to the office if you'd like. No, I really don't feel like talking today. Can we, can we do this another time? Of course. Grant, are you sure you're all right? Yeah, I'm sorry. I will make it up to you, I promise. Now, if you'll excuse me. Yes. Ooh, ooh, please. Having a bad day? Somewhat. I just had a run into Jackie Templeton. Would you like a couple of aspirin? No, thank you. It's a good thing Shelton's a lot more reasonable. You know, otherwise this Hannibal business could have blown sky high. All right, come on. Tell me what happened. Well, they're running a series of articles in the paper on... Uh, Wives of officials. Yeah, I saw one today. It was on Gail Baldwin, our first lady. A very nice picture of her. Yeah. Well, Hannibal's only got to lay eyes on Holly's photograph and... Oh, you're right. He'd put two and two together and be on the first bus out of town. Anyway, I got Sheldon to pull the picture. So, who have you got to replace her? Hmm? Look, I have been holding auditions all day, and I want to tell you the pickings are mighty lean. No budding ballerinas on the force? No, and I have the soft feet to prove it. You're not meant to go through a routine with them, you know. Oh, now, you know me. Anything for the department. Well, I'll get you that citation you've always wanted. Do me a favor. Get me some Epsom salts instead, and then we'll call it even. You know, Robert, it's not easy to find a cop who can dance. Mm. You know, I guess that's why they call them flat feet. Oh, please. Funny. <laughs> oh. Anyway, keep looking. Oh, I will. You know, it's too bad about Holly. She was the perfect undercover agent. She was doing a great job, and <laughs> we know she can dance. Yeah, well, dancing notwithstanding, I don't want her any more involved. This whole thing could get dangerous. No, no, I understand that. I bet it was rough, though, talking her out of it. Well, you know, my wife mm. wants to be where the action is. I'll tell you something. You've got quite a woman there. Yeah, I know. But I've already come close to losing her once, and I'm not going to put myself through that again. I don't blame you. At least I know she's safe in the Versailles room. Poor Celia. I declare she, she just turned and ran like she'd seen a ghost. But I don't blame you. The real grand, her grand, I mean, it's so confusing. I really don't know where she finds the strength. She and Grant have been through so much. Oh, I know. I wonder what it's like. What's that? Having two lovers who look exactly the same. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Well, actually, I do, sort of. There were these twins that I met one time in Palm Beach. Both of them had crushes on me. <laughs> well, one time they had... Oh, one of... no. What's wrong? Uh, 
don't be surprised. It, it, it's too complicated to explain now, but don't be surprised by what happens. Well, well I rarely am, darling. <laughs> Aren't you going to say hello, Melissa? Well, I wasn't sure you're the same girl I knew from the dance studio. One and the same. This is how you dress and where you go to eat. I'm not so sure. See, I thought you were broke. I get by. God, I'd love to know your secret. You know, I have to work two jobs to pay for those lessons. Really? Mm. Night clerk in this seedy hotel. Now this. I just started today. You might know how it is. I doubt it. <laughs> you and I are, well, we're nowhere near in the same situation, Margaret. Oh, but we are. There's a perfectly good explanation as to why I'm here. Dressed like this. Well, why don't you tell her, Margaret? <laughs> We're all ears. Well, go on, Margaret. Don't keep the poor girl waiting. Um, well, you're not going to believe this, uh, but... But what? I won everything. You won it? Yes, the whole thing. The clothes, lunch in the fast siren. <laughs> well, why don't you tell her how you won it, Margaret? Oh, it's so fascinating. It's so incredible, I hardly believe it myself. <laughs> well, go on. Well, I guessed the mystery tune on WQPC. As a matter of fact, this is the disc jockey who took my call, Tiffany Hill. <laughs> that, that's truly an incredible story, don't you think? Mm. Mm. I've never won anything before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should have seen how excited Margaret was when I told her that she'd hit the jackpot. <laughs> you don't look like a disc jockey. Really? Mm. Well, how should I look? What would you say your name was again? Tiffany Hill. I work the uh, midnight to 6 a.m. shift. This is Tiffany Hill, the night bird, winging your way with music for lovers and other strangers. <laughs> well, don't tell me you've never listened to my show. I don't have the time. I'm always working. You should have. Sometime maybe you'll win something. <laughs> I have to get back to work. Nice seeing you. <laughs> what was that all about? Would you think she believed me? <laughs> Are you kidding? She'll probably be up all night trying to find Tiffany Hill, the night bird. <laughs> you were wonderful. Oh, thank you, darling. We southern girls know how to uh, think on our feet. You suddenly saved me. <laughs> <laughs> well, from what is what I would like to know? Well, it's a long story. Oh, well, I've got the time, so why don't you tell me? What's going on? Hello again. Grant. I saw you run out of the restaurant earlier. I'm sorry, I... Celia, I don't want my presence here to upset you. I really think that we should talk. Well, I'm not sure that I figured that your husband would be at work now. Yes, he is. May I come in then? Of course. I don't know if I mentioned the other day, but you really have a charming home. Thank you. It's small, but we like it. And you always had an eye for design. Did you ever finish your art studies? Yes, I did. I got my master's in Paris. That's wonderful. May I take off my coat? Certainly, yes. Thank you. you want me to talk to me about? The past. Yes, well, I figured as much. In a way, I do too. Then why the hesitation? Because I'm a little frightened. See? Of what? Well, for one thing, because of what happened. That wasn't your fault. No, I know, I know, but... There you were in that institution, and I... I just went on with my life, thinking that... That nothing had changed? Yes. Grant, it's just so weird. I understand. It's weird for me, too. It's just so strange being married to a man that looks just like you. 
At least you're consistent. <laughs> That's true. And I think you have excellent taste in men. How can you be so charming through all this? Because I still think of you as my friend, Celia. And I don't want you uncomfortable about my being here. I'm not anymore. Have a seat. Thank you. How can I help you? Well, I am trying to put the pieces of my life back together, and you were such a part of it that I thought you could help me fill in some of the gaps. That's right. There's so much. Anything will help. Well, do you remember that Christmas that our family spent together in Aspen? Which one? The one where we got snowed in at New Year's. <laughs> oh, yes. And we were both so thrilled that we wouldn't be able to get back to school in time. <laughs> yes. I was, I guess, about 11, so that makes you, what, 14? Yes. Yes, that was... That was a wonderful Christmas. My brother was still alive then. I'm sorry, Brad. I'm sorry. That was just before the accident, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Poor Ian. I'm amazed you can talk about it. You never could before. Well, perhaps I finally accepted it. Do you still ski? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, Grant and I... That's all right. My husband and I just went over the Christmas holidays. And did he, uh, did he seem to know much about my past? He knew enough. Did he ever mention the, uh, the accident and my brother? No. Why do you ask? Well, I'm just curious. He seemed to know so much about me, I wondered if he knew about that, too. I don't know. I, I, uh, never remember him mentioning it, and I certainly didn't ask, knowing how sensitive you are about it. I really don't know if he knows or not. It doesn't matter. Say, do you remember that summer when I taught you how to drive in Amagansett? You're not going to embarrass <laughs> me with that story. <laughs> I mean, don't, don't pick up any pillows. After what you did to my car, I'll never let you forget it. <laughs> I've never seen anyone have such trouble making a U-turn. Well, maybe it was the teacher. Well, now, that's, an, that's another point of view, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> Tell me, did you ever learn to make that turn? I do wheelies in the parking lot. <laughs> Remind me never to ride. I can't believe it. On All My Children. I love you, Erica. Will you marry me? Yes! Erica's dream is coming true, but Adam Chandler could change it all. I certainly like the way you handle your business, Mr. Chandler. I think you'll like the way I handle my pleasure, too. And she's tempted by Adam's power. And she's a beautiful, fascinating woman. We're going to be married. Make no mistake about it. Well, you can't blame me for being interested. The choice is Erica's on All My Children, weekdays. Hobbies, uh... are. <clears throat> Hi. Hey. Hal's about a nice, big, sloppy kiss for your old man from his gorgeous wife. Hmm? Yes, yes? Here? Ah. Well, you can't always get what you want. So, how was lunch with Tiffany? Fine. Anything exciting happen? Ha! <laughs> Guess that means no, huh? We were so bored, huh? Even our salad wilted. Sorry to hear that. Well, what else did you do? Nothing. How was your day? I was busy. Oh, I went to the Herald, too. Did... are they gonna pull the picture? Yeah. Oh, and, uh, you remember I was talking about a whole, uh, slew of robberies we've been having lately? Got a new lead today. We're closing on a suspect. Oh, that's great. 
We, uh, found a policewoman to take your place. How nice. Well, you'd be happy to hear that Ramsey had a devil of a time finding somebody who was as, uh, as nimble a foot as you. Could have saved yourselves a lot of time if you put me back on the case. Ah, at last. The reason for all the pouting. I was doing a damn good job and you know it. Darling, nobody said you weren't. No one's denying that you did a great job. Well, then why didn't you put me back on the case? Too dangerous. Nonsense. The man teaches dancing. How dangerous can he be? I fail to see the time, but in any case... You're off it. Please, you're not being fair. Look, Holly, dear, when Hannibal realizes that someone is onto him, there's no telling how he might act. But I had that bracelet beeper thing. I could have signaled you when I was in not danger. Not good enough. What if something happens? Huh? No, no, I'm sorry. This is now time for a professional to be called in. Don't want stupid little wifey mucking things up, do we? That is not what I'm saying. I really wish you'd stop thinking of me as some kind of toy, fine to play with, but not to be involved in anything serious. And that is not what I'm thinking. Well, you'd have a hard time proving to me that that's not the case. Look, I just don't want to see you in any danger. All you want to see me is in the kitchen. No, you're wrong there. I've seen you there, and it wasn't pretty. Thanks. No, look, let's face it. The adventure into high cuisine was something more than a fiasco, right? I was desperate to have something to do. And I, that was the only reason I had to try cooking. Oh, look. <clears throat> I've got something that'll keep you busy for at least nine months. Probably a couple of years after that. There you go again. Well, you wouldn't be bored. You know, I really don't understand you. Which particular virtue? Virtue? Why is it that all the other women in your life have had careers? What other women? Well, Connie, with the WSB, Tiffany in show business. And what about Jackie on the oh, paper? Hold it. Oh, <laughs> you're not going to turn into another Jackie, please. Well, at least it keeps her busy. As a matter of fact, she was, she was hard at it at the Versailles room today. Oh. <laughs> and who was she harassing in there? No one, as a matter of fact. She was speaking with the real Grant, poor Celia. She ran right out of the restaurant. Mm. I guess she can't get away from it. Poor thing. You know, you may drive me crazy at times. At least there's only one of you. You know, every now and again I wish there were two. Well, that's an interesting thing. Yeah? It occurred to me the other night. Well, well, I had twice as much fun. You can have twice as much fun. Yeah, I would, would I? Yeah. <laughs> Celia, thank you so much for spending the afternoon with me. I feel immensely better. So do I really quite cathartic talking about the past, isn't it? There's some wonderful memories. I think it would be very foolish for us to try to bury them. Yes. Well, I'd like to reminisce further, but my husband's going to be home I soon. I understand. He gets a little upset. I understand that also. You need say no more. I'm on my way. I would just like to tell you one thing. You are Still the same gracious, sensitive lady I remember. Thank you. Goodbye, Grant. Let him in the house? Well, he just wanted to talk, Grant. About what? In the past. Why? Well, he said he wanted to remember some things. And you believed him? Why shouldn't I? Can't you see that it's just a ruse, Celia? For what? <laughs> a ruse to, to play on your sympathies. To bring up past memories to try to get back together with you. Don't be ridiculous, Grant. The man has just recovered his memory after eight years. There are bound to be gaps, and I can help him fill them in. But why you? 
because we grew up together. I think it's the least I can do, considering. Susie, please, don't let him play on your guilt. I'm not. He's been nothing but kind. Kind? All he wants to do is recover some memories and get on with his life. Well, then let him talk to Armistead. Well, what does Armistead know? We grew up together. We played together. You were lovers together. Grant, you can't seriously think that I'm still interested in him like that. You were before. That was a long time ago. I love you. Well, then why, why do you keep dealing with him? Grant, I'll put it like this. The sooner he can piece together his life, the sooner he's going to be out of Port Charles. And that's all I'm trying to help him do. I just hope that he doesn't destroy our marriage in the process. No one can do that. Unless it's us. 